It's time for another subscriber video. Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. A little while back, I asked you guys on the community tab of the YouTube channel, as I do from time to time, what is, in your opinion, a perfect 10 out of 10 fragrance that's gonna stand the test of time? A fragrance that's never gonna go out of style, something that's just so perfecto that when you smell it, you think, man, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, this one is still gonna be a perfect 10. And you guys provided me with your answers. So I'm sharing those with you here today, 12 of your perfect 10 out of 10 fragrances that are gonna stand the test of time, that are gonna smell great forever. I'm gonna have all these linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there. Also feel free to check out these codes that can save you some money at a bunch of different websites. Of notice is Lucky Scent for December. A code changes to Gents DEC, not Gents 10 anymore. That was the code for November. Now it's Gents DEC. After December, is it gonna be different? It might not even exist, but for December, that's what it is. Before we jump into these wonderful fragrances that you have chosen, a quick reminder that my fragrances are released, and would you look at that, the 15 mils have dropped as well. So these are the 15 mil travel sizes right here of Edgewater and West Loop, so you can pick those up if you would like to uh, try out the fragrance, but you don't want to splurge for a full-size bottle just yet. You can get these little dandies right here. So those are available on Michael Malol's website. You can check that down in the description below, and uh, also, the full-size fragrances are also available. If you order on the website, use the code GENTSENSE, and you can also uh, take a gander of these at uh, every Perfumania and fragrance outlet store in the United States. So if you got one of those nearby, pop in there, give them a spray. All right, let's go, let's do it. So here we go, your perfect 10 out of 10 fragrances, some Magnifico choices here. The first one is from Patrick Allen, 1675, who says, I think Spice Bomb Extreme will stand the test of time. The vanilla and that blast of spice will never get old. Good old Spice Bomb Extreme. This one is like um, cyclical. It's uh, a fragrance that gets talked about a whole lot. People love it, love it, love it. Oh, it's talked about too much. Let's not talk about it for a while. I'll talk about it again. It's kind of how it goes with this one. I do think it smells awesome for me personally. My favorite in the Spice Bomb line. Uh, I love the vanilla in there. The black vanilla, I think, really amps this one up, takes it to the next level. And that spiciness in there, of course, uh, that kind of tobacco feel, just a perfect fragrance for wintertime, big time performance as well. So Spice Bomb Extreme, I agree, good stuff. Mythical Gaming 4527 says, might be a bit of an oddball here, uh, but I think Arrow's Flame will stand the test of time. The progression of the scent is really enjoyable and easy to follow, ending with the familiar Eros DNA. Now this is something I've harped on a little bit uh, over the past couple years or so, but Eros Flame is interesting in that it's almost, at this point, as of when I'm filming, an outlier to the line, because you have the Eau Parfum and Parfum, and then just randomly, flame. I guess it would make more sense if they started to do more elemental fragrances, right? Like Eros, wind, water, earth, heart. Yeah, if they did that, it would make more sense, I guess. But right now it's just kind of an outlier. And Eros Flame, when it first came out, was not as loved as the other Eros fragrances, myself included. When I first got this in, I was a little wishy-washy on it. Then as I wore it more, I grew to really enjoy it. Same thing happened with a lot of you guys, because when this first came out, people were kind of like, meh. And then as time went on and more people smelled it more, they realized, wait a sec, that's actually a really, really good twist on the Eros DNA. So this is uh, kind of a dark horse little guy here, you know, under the radar a little bit. One of those ones that smells fantastic, that uh, kind of took a while to catch on, a cult fragrance hit. Next up, we have Sedino Anthony 45 who says, Dior Homme Intense has to be one of the best scents out there. The iris makes it smell classy and I will be wearing it in the fall slash winter months. This right here got mentioned, I believe, more than anything else. It got a ton of upvotes. People were really going for this. And Dior Homme Intense is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Period. I think it smells absolutely amazing. It is more of a formal wintertime scent. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't have the versatility of some of these other fragrances, but in terms of just quality, how it smells, and to me, how it changed my view on fragrances, makes this one of the best ever. Because the iris in here, for a lot of people, is not something that they gravitate toward, especially if they're just getting into fragrances. But once you can kind of wrap your head around this and accept it and then love it, it really opens the door for a lot of other things. This is a good one. User RC7TS9XU6B. 
Surely that's not a random jumbling of numbers from YouTube. Uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mans Le Parfum will always be in my top designer list. I will never get tired of it and will wear it till I die. Dang. What about Le Mans Elixir? What do you, what do you, what do you think about that one? It's pretty good. Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mans Le Parfum is a fantastic scent though, even though I really dig that Le Mans Elixir. And uh, hopefully this never gets discontinued because you say you're never gonna get tired of it, you'll wear it till you die. It might get more difficult if this gets axed down the road, but hopefully that doesn't happen for quite a while. And honestly, with how good this smells, I got a feeling it'll stick around for a while. CRE 810 SION 5 Creations. Is that what the create creations? I'm a moron. Create tensions. I get it now. Lana Weed Alone, 25 years from now, it will still be a legendary night out fragrance. A good old Lana Weed, good old L N D L. It's nice to come back to. Cardamom in there, of course, is what everybody gets drawn to. It is a wonderful night out fragrance. Big compliment puller, very sexy. It does not sell as well as uh, some people might anticipate, at least as far as the US numbers goes. Uh, it's not that it's a failure, obviously. But I think a lot of times when people think about Lana Weed Alone, they think this is like a top 10 bestseller in the US, and it ain't. Not top 20 actually last year. So it's interesting in that uh, everybody in the fragrance world holds it in a, a very high regard for the most part. But then in actuality, the number of people wearing it is uh, a little bit further down here. But it still smells awesome, still gets the job done, and still smells relevant today. Like when you smell this, you don't think to yourself, oh, it smells dated, nah. So I could see this absolutely still working uh, in decades into the future. Zach Anthony 3834 says, I think Valentino Womo Intense will stand the test of time. That stuff is awesome. Was that like the, uh, what was that? Dawson's Creek? <laughs> Cry face. <laughs> So why am I faux upset? Well, I'll tell you. A Little while back, I filmed a video, uh, masterpiece fragrances, fragrances I thought were masterpieces, and I included this one. Now this was filmed a little while back, like a week ago or something like that. I don't know when it'll go live on the channel, but that's when I filmed it. I, I talked in that video about how uh, for a while, everybody thought this was discontinued, and then you know it came back in a slightly different presentation style, the bottle slightly different and everything like that. Even if it was at full retail, at least you could find it. So I, I put that out there. And then, a few days after filming that video, I found out this stuff is discontinued. Like discontinued for real this time. For real, for real. Now, indeed, if you go to Valentino's website, you look this up, it shows as a discontinued product on Valentino's own website. Now, I know every time that discontinuation happens, uh, there will always be a group of people who are like, no, it's not possible. They start flipping stuff. YouTubers, ah. But um, for me, if uh, it says directly on Valentino's website that this is discontinued and, and says on there in bold print, yeah, we're not making this anymore, it's done. I'm, I'm gonna take their word for it at that point. So <laughs> while you say here, it will stand the test of time, I think the scent profile will, but obviously the scent itself will not because it is now resting in peace. Uh, Sol Caballeros 485 says, Chanel Platinum Egoist, one of the very few designers I consider a 10 out of 10 and timeless classic. Ah uh, yes, a fine fragrance. Going to appeal more to guys, obviously middle-aged or older, younger guys, probably not gonna appreciate it as much because it does have that very aromatic, clean, classy, sort of barbershop-y, esque feel to it. You know, it doesn't have an overload of sweetness or anything like that. It doesn't have that gourmand edge, which is very popular right now, but still this is an exquisite fragrance. Harvey Trevino 2257 says, Givenchy Gentleman Reserve Privé has my vote. Thank you Macy's for releasing a 200 mil. Technically, Givenchy released the 200 mil for Macy's. This one got brought up a lot too, actually. This one got a whole bunch of love and uh, I absolutely understand why. For a lot of people, this is the pinnacle of the Gentleman line. It still has that iris in there, uh, which has drawn some comparisons with some of the fragrances in this line to stuff like Dior Homme, Dior Homme Intense, or Valentina Womo Intense uh, to an extent. But it's done in a way that I think more people would think of as modern or more modern uh, with that bit of booziness that kind of you know, provides a counterpoint to the iris so it doesn't go full on makeup bag style. Really sexy, good performance, big compliment puller, 
Smells amazing, I love this stuff. The next one is from Suck Less. YSL Tuxedo really does it for me. I think it's a 10 out of 10 and there's been so many clones of it, it just has to be up there. So many clones of YSL Tuxedo, like I don't even know what you're talking about. These don't look anything like Tuxedo. And then there's, yeah, there's more stuff like this, which is also a Tuxedo clone, but just not in the same tuxedo -y bottle. So yeah, YSL Tuxedo, that is a very popular fragrance. Obviously, you got these different clones here. Uh, you have fragrances that smell similar to Tuxedo that aren't officially clones, like Rocus Mustache Eau de Parfum. It's been one of the more popular scent DNA since it came out. People really love it, drawn to it. Uh, another one that's great for fall and winter time. Chris, 6815, says, I think Dolce & Gabbana is the one Luminous Night. It's definitely a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. That sweet date and incense is awesome. I would love to actually have a backup bottle of it. So yeah, yet another fragrance that the issue is, in the US anyway, really hard to find. This one is constantly sold out at discounters. When it pops in stock, it's not cheap, but it still sells out pretty much immediately. And so yeah, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. If you already have a bottle, which uh, looks like you do, you know, it's hard to prioritize getting a backup of it because you have to really stay on top of everything and then pay a good amount to get it. And then of course you got a lot of people out there who want a bottle themselves, who are trying to scoop that bottle up. So I would just leave it to them probably. Hopefully this will one day become easier to find like the one Royal Night or Mysterious Night, but the demand for Luminous Night is much higher than those two. So that does create an issue. It is fantastic though. One of, if not the best fragrances in the entire The One line from the beginning until now. Up next, we've got Sun Supreme who says, I'll go to bat for Terre d'Hermes as one of the best designer scents at any and every opportunity. Terre d'Hermes is one of those fragrances that has a very ardent following. So people who really dig that one will herald it for the versatility, for the classiness, the ease of use, you know, just the quality, everything about it. And frankly, how unique it is when you think about when it came out and what else was on the market at the time. Then you also have people who will say Terre d'Hermes is overhyped. It is not as good as it's made out to be. And a lot of that is because uh, they don't like the earthiness in there, the kind of like flinty feel that it has, that kind of dirty orange, the vetiver, it just doesn't work for them. And so they'll spray it on and be like, I can't wear this, I don't like it. These two groups are, are very uh, diametrically opposed. They don't see eye to eye. There's not much agreement going on there between the two. I fall on uh, that side where I say that it smells awesome, has that versatility, is classy. I'll tell you, these bottles are really strong. I dropped this thing accidentally, well, of course, accidentally, but I dropped it um, from probably about here and uh, onto concrete and it chipped the corner and then kind of banged up the uh, top right here a little bit and kind of scuffed it up. That's it though, it still works perfectly. So that's a tough bottle, man, <laughs> really tough. You know, it's thick glass down there. What the duck, 1192, last up says Tom Ford Ombre Leather. It became my favorite straight away and to me it's the perfect fragrance. Only problem is that it sometimes gives me a headache, but that's only because I've sprayed too much on. Personally, there's really nothing bad I can say about it, except for what you just said, that it gives you a headache. <laughs> this is perfect fragrance, oh my God. God, my head, oh, but it smells so good. Spray you less on. There's a lesson to be learned there. Overspraying sometimes is, is not the move. Sometimes you wanna ramp those uh, sprays down, not up. That is funny though, that cracked me up. Ombre leather does smell fantastic. I agree completely with you. It's got just the right amount of sweetness. It's very smooth. People love it, very appealing. You can wear it formally. You can wear it uh, to a business event. You could wear this to the office as long as you don't spray it on too heavy. Absolutely don't do that. Works casually well. Also a good fall and winter time scent and really kind of leapfrogged Tuscan leather because for the longest time people were like, oh, Tuscan leather, Tuscan leather, that's like, the number one leather fragrance, you gotta get it. And then Tom Ford put out ombre leather and everybody was like, Tusk, Tuscan leather, you're still good. I like you, I like you a lot. You, you can stay there though. So ombre leather wrapping this one up, 12 different 10 out of 10 fragrances. And uh, when I think about it, could these stand the test of time? A lot of them already have, 
but I think yes. Assuming they don't get uh, discontinued and become impossible to find. So there we go, guys. Thank you for hanging with me. Thank you, everybody, for taking part of this. If you want to be featured in a future video, there should be a question up on the community tab of the YouTube channel. Check that out. Leave a comment. Upvote other people's. You could be in a future video. Thank you, guys. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow. Another freaking video.